Hey there, Sharon Horry Elson here. Welcome to day 1,926 of What You Have to Know. Documenting the journey. Originally started uh, using this as a video log, a journal of keeping track of what I was doing as I transitioned from the brick and mortar corporate world of businesses over a quarter century in corporate America while simultaneously owning and operating and building businesses in different industries. And then following my divorce and you know, separating out all the assets and all the craziness that happens with the divorce, I found myself old enough to retire, but I didn't really want to retire yet. And so I was looking for something different and new to do. And I decided I'd always been curious about the online world. The internet happened while I was working in corporate America and, and building businesses. Yet I was busy doing offline things and not, I wasn't really doing anything online. I dabbled here and there. I had some social media, but nothing that I ever was really using for business. So in 2017, uh, when I had the opportunity following my divorce to do something different, I thought, I'm going to go in the online world. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to do some stuff and then I'm going to share what I learned, hopefully, and share some of the lessons I learned. And that led me down a lot of different paths, a lot of different roads. You know, there's so many different things you can try and do on the internet. And some of them are really, really fun and really exciting, but don't give great results. Other ones give great results, but are pretty boring and mundane. It runs the, the gamut of our expectations, right? But some of the things I did worked out great. Some of the things I did crashed and burned totally. And I think I learned more from the things that crashed and burned and didn't work for me because they put me more quickly and easily onto the path and onto the things that do work for me. Started doing challenges. I've been doing challenges my whole life, but I'd never done them online. And they're really fun to do online, right? They're really fun to do via daily videos. That's why I do an annual challenge. I do the Get Your Goals Annual Challenge. That's this year's annual challenge. It's to do one thing every day to get what we want, get what you want, get what I want. And I'm breaking that down using a life framework that I've used for I've used a seven part life framework for yeah, since like the 80s, since the 1980s. I know, really, really long time. And then in 2021, following the pandemic and all the craziness that that had for all of us, I joined a coaching group that was focusing on core skills and core values. And, and a couple of those were communication and confidence. And I'm like, yeah, we all need more confidence. We all need to become better communicators. So why not add that to my goals and my objectives and my legacy plans and my life framework in terms of how I'm trying to take what is normally chaos in, in many of our lives, but good for you if it's not in yours, but mine tends to run on chaos. How do I put a framework around some of that craziness and make it so that I can be more intentional in what it is I'm trying to create and how I achieve my goals and objectives? So I create a couple of pieces of content every day. One is the annual challenge. I do a, a quick video for the annual challenge. And then for the group, I say, okay, here's today's action item. So for example, we are as part of the Get Your Goals Annual Challenge focusing uh, the first month we went over different goal frameworks and different ways of looking at setting, uh, getting, achieving, thinking about goals. Then we, we created our own seven step framework that we go over every month in each of these different areas and aspects of the life framework. And we did, uh, emotional in February, mental in March, spiritual in April, and this month, May, we're doing physical, which happens to be perfect. Normally, I do physical the first month of the year because I want to make sure that my physical well-being is taken care of. But this year, for some reason, I decided to do it in May, and it looks like I'm going to be having heart surgery like maybe as soon as next week. I've got a pre-op appointment tomorrow. Uh, turns out my ICD in my box is, is uh, finally failing after 13 years. Uh, so it's the last nine and it's going on 13. So I feel pretty good about that. And I'm okay about getting it replaced. But it's it uh, is going to happen sooner than I thought. I didn't think it would happen maybe even not this year, but August or September at the very soonest. And here it is May. It's going to happen in May. So to me, it's kind of perfect. It coincides with this month's area of focus, physical of being physical health. And I guess since I'm having a physical pre-op uh, physical tomorrow, I will know a little bit more about what I do and do not need to do and what I need to focus on as part of my personal physical well-being and goals, which is what this challenge is all about. What do we need to do to move our life in the direction we have to go? It doesn't matter what anybody else says. It matters what we do and what's important for us. So physical well-being is this month's focus. And our topic today was thoughts and beliefs around our physical nature around us as physical beings here on the planet and the goals that we will set for ourselves. It, and, you know, it falls into different categories, self-efficacy, our mindset, our, um, our, uh, what am I thinking? Self-talk, the, you know, the, the conversation that's going on in our head, 
all of that is our thinking and our belief. Some of it, a lot of it, the vast majority of it is subconscious. And what we want to do today is actually pay attention and tune into that and then just start taking notes about some of the beliefs. We have I already started my list because as soon as I did the, the action, I'm like, okay, well, I better start thinking about mine because it's later than usual for me today to be making my videos. So did that. And our... Our idiom, last year I decided to make life a little easier on myself and I have a business group called the Super Size Your Business Group. I work with a lot of business owners and a lot of, in a lot of different industries and we have mastermind groups, we have a coaching program, we have all kinds of stuff, but we have a group, a free Facebook group where I share an idiom a day. What does it mean? Where does it come from? And how might you use it to grow and build and supersize your business, whatever your business is. So it's pretty general information and mindset and thinking and common sense or whatever. But I decided last year, since I was doing an annual challenge, I was going to think about and select an idiom that went along with that topic. So today's that goes along sort of what the topic is, you are what you eat. Now you might think, okay, how the heck do you take an, an expression like you are what you eat and tie that to business? actually pretty easy and, and it's become a fun little personal challenge for me every day to take some of these idioms that you wouldn't think have anything to do with growing and building a business yet since it's human beings growing and building businesses they have everything to do with building our businesses and to me you are what you eat is the same as what you put into things is what you get out of them and if you want to add value and create value you need to have good inputs if you want to have good health you need to have good inputs good nutrition good uh, sources of water and hydration and energy and uh, sleep, etc. All kinds of things. Well, it's true for our businesses as well. The the quality of the things that we put together and in our business, and I have a lot of manufacturing in my personal background and experience. So the quality of the raw materials that you use to put together to create the products and services that you're selling to people makes all the difference in the world. And I learned that firsthand in different industries. I uh, remember ordering parts from China for an Italian food manufacturing business. And they met all the specs, but guess what? They didn't work. They didn't work in our equipment because although they met the specs, they, they really weren't fit for use with our equipment. And so they'd wear out sooner, et cetera. So that was, you know, we learned those lessons over time. What you put into things is what you get out. You know, so we need to put good things into ourselves that that's not just our physical bodies and the things that we consume. It's also the things we put into our mind, the things we the thing, the people we surround ourselves with, et cetera. So it's got a lot to do with business. Right. If we want to just be a little creative and a little open minded and think about well, how could this impact how I'm building and growing my business? How does it impact how I show up as a leader? How does it impact how we set the example for other people? How does it impact what it is that we're trying to create here in the world? I am an avid believer in we're all here to make the world a better place and to create and have the best possible life experience that we can. And that involves a whole lot of things. Anyway, that was kind of convoluted. So that's, that's it. That's what I'm working on today. So much going on. So much craziness going on, and now we're going to add uh, some surgery to it, but that's that's just life, right? We deal with the challenges and the obstacles and the things that come our way, and we keep moving forward. All right, that's it. If I can help you anyway, ask. Otherwise, I will be with you tomorrow, much earlier than today. You know, life gets in the way, and our, our schedules and things have to change. All right, have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.